Hello everyone. Today we are going continuing with the topic cerebellum and we'll be seeing the next in the series of our cerebellum videos which is dealing with the topic of functional subdivisions and the nuclei of the cerebellum. Before we go on to the functional subdivisions, let us revise what we already seen in my previous video. The cerebellum consists of an outer gray matter and an inner white matter. The inner white matter is already called the medullary core and it is arranged in a tree-like pattern which is called the arbor vitae which means the tree of life and within this white matter what we have got are the four deep nuclei of the cerebellum which are what we will be seeing specifically in this class. So when you look at the histology of the cerebellum we can see that it has a very specific structure which cannot be mistaken in any slide and you can clearly demarcate the various layers of the cortex as well as the central white core of the medulla and this cortical layers are microscopically three you have an outer molecular layer an inner granular cell layer and a middle Purkinje cell layer so very characteristic and once you zoom in let's zoom into this and see what are the three layers this is the outer molecular layer which is slightly less cellular when compared to this layer which is the inner granular layer consists of a very specific or very prominent nuclear layer. In between that if you can look at this I will highlight these special basket shaped cells called Purkinje cells and these form the intermediate or Purkinje cell layer and if you try to draw the layers of the cerebellum in a simple manner, we can represent it like that. Even though the HND diagram is not like this, we can't use this diagram in a histology setup. But this is a simple representation of the different layers of the cerebellar cortex. Now, the cerebellar white matter is very similar to the cerebral white matter in the sense that it has also got association fibers, projection fibers and commissural fibers. We would remember that the association fibers are interconnecting different parts of the cerebellar cortex of the same hemisphere. The projection fibers project from the cerebellar cortex to the lower uh, nuclei and commissural fibers just like cerebral commissural fibers interconnect the two cerebellar hemispheres. Apart from this, the cerebellum also has got afferent fibers coming from outside and entering the cerebellum as well as efferent outputs which are coming out from the cerebellar nuclei and go out into the centers outside the cerebellum. So let's see the cerebellar nuclei. They are embedded within the central core of the white matter and can be named from lateral to medial side as the dentate nucleus which is the largest nucleus. It looks like a compelled paper bag with its openings or its hilum directed medially. The second is the emboliform nucleus followed by the globose nucleus which is further medial and the medial most is also called is the vestigial nucleus which is also called the roof nucleus since it is seen associated with the roof of the fourth ventricle. One thing which is very nice to remember which is very important to remember actually is that the globose and the emboliform nuclei are together called the nucleus interpositus because they hold a position in between the vestigial further medially and the dentate which is further laterally. How can we classify the cerebellum? That is the next part of our topic. The cerebellum can be classified into three. We have an anatomical classification, we have a morphological classification and then we have a functional classification. For the anatomical classification please check out my previous video where we have divided the cerebellum into lobules both the vermis and the lateral hemispheres. So in this video we will see what are the morphological and functional classifications. So morphologically the cerebellum can be classified into three in order to remember that it is very nice to recollect how we have evolved. The archicerebellum is the first cerebellum to develop. It is also called the vestibular cerebellum. It is seen in aquatic vertebrae because when you are swimming in the water you need to balance. So you need a vestibular cerebellum to balance. So once these aquatic vertebrae found their way onto land, in order to survive on the land, in order to walk on land, you have to develop a muscle tone. And so the cerebellum developed its next component which is the paleocerebellum also called the spinocerebellum. The spinocerebellum appears in terrestrial vertebrates. 
The next in line, once you have learned how to control your body, you become more advanced, you evolve further, you have to hunt, you have to feed, you have to escape. And for that, you have to control the tone of your muscles. And that is the last part of the cerebellum to develop. And that is the neocerebellum, also called the pontocerebellum. And this part is well developed in all advanced terrestrial organisms, especially the mammals. Coming to the functional classification, they are actually regionally classification, a regional classification, that's what I meant. The cerebellum can be regionally classified into three longitudinal zones. The vermal zone, which is along the vermis, it is also called the median zone since it lies in the middle. A paravermal zone, which is two areas on either side of the vermis. And then you have the lateral zones or the hemispherical zones, which are later, lateral. Now, let's see what they are. The morphological classification. This is a diagram that I showed in my previous lecture video. This is a cerebellum opened out. Let us label certain key areas in this. This is the lingula and below that we have the floccular nodular lobe. Note that I have given them in a specific color and there are two ends of the cerebellum. This is important. The next is the anterior lobe which you all know lies in front of the fissura prima. You are right. And then the posterior lobe. A small part of the vermis of the posterior lobe is also colored in pink. This is the pyramid or the uvula. Now let's see the different morphological subtypes. What we remember from the previous slide, the vestibular cerebellum or the archicerebellum, the two components are from the diagram, it is very clear, the lingula and the floccular nodular lobe. And they help in the maintenance of balance and control of the eye movement. So the two parts which are contributing to the vestibular cerebellum in our present organ are the ringula and the floccular nodular lobe. The next is the spinocerebellum also called paleocerebellum. It is concerned with the motor execution, regulation of muscle and coordination. It's the second one to develop. And the last one for advanced planning of voluntary activity, you have your cerebrocerebellum or the neocerebellum or the last one, the pontocerebellum. So the major part of the posterior lobe is contributing to the cerebrocerebellum, a major part of the anterior lobe plus the pyramid and uvula of the vermis are contributing to the spinocerebellum and the contributions to the vestibular cerebellum come from the lingula and the floccular nodular lobe. Let's see what are the functional classifications. So the functional classification is basically based on efferent connections. What are efferent connections? Connections going out from the cortex. So when there are connections going out from the cortex of the median area or the vermal zone given in red in the diagram as you can see, those form the median zone efferents and all the efferents from the median zone go to the fastigial nucleus which is the central most or the medial most nucleus. They help in the control of the trunk and the extensor muscle tone. Now let's see what is blue. That would be the paravermal zone and all the efferents coming from the cortex of the paravermal zone go to the nucleus interpositus. Remember nucleus interpositus is globose plus emboliform nuclei and they control the movements of the proximal limb muscles as well as the flexor muscle tone. The last area as you can see in the diagram is green and that corresponds to the lateral or the hemisphere zone. All the efferents coming down from the cortex of these areas finally reach the dentate nucleus and they are concerned with the coordination of the distal limb muscles for skillful prehensile act. Prehensile is when you use your thumb. Alright, so that concludes the second video. Let's see what are the cerebellar connections in the next video. Thank you so much.